Tom Downey here for Chat Sports. Let's get right into the latest NFL rumors. Uh, the Commanders hire Cliff Kingsbury. Doesn't go to the Raiders. Chaos ensues. Goes to the Commanders instead. And that has immediately kick-started the rumors might be strong. Theories, ideas of Caleb Williams is a commander. He's, he is from D.C., by the way, which I think is kind of noteworthy there. However, the commanders do not control the destiny here for where Caleb Williams goes. The Bears have the number one overall pick. And they are still the favorites to draft. Caleb Williams would also impact Justin Fields where he goes. If the Bears time this up correctly, i.e. if they get this done, you know, before the NFL Combine wraps up, then the quarterback carousel would be drastically impacted by what the Bears choose to do. You don't want to have a whole Josh Rosen thing of not trading the quarterback and letting the market dry up there. Adam Schefter on the Pat McAfee show was asked, okay, Williams to the commanders, what's going to happen there? And Schefter says there's a few issues with this. Number one, are the Bears going to be willing to move on from taking Caleb Williams, which I believe seems to be the widespread consensus around the league, that Caleb Williams will be the number one overall pick? And if they are willing to move on from him, then you have to like Drake May or Jaden Daniels enough or Justin Fields. Schefter, of course, is right here. The vibes are the Bears are going to go with a quarterback at the number one overall pick, and most likely that would end up being Caleb Williams. Now, having that number one overall pick changes things for the Bears. If the Bears are picking at seven or eight or whatever, or just their normal spot of nine, They'd probably be keeping Justin Fields and not investing in a quarterback. But having that top spot changes things. And Williams is the favorite for that. Now, it could certainly be Drake May or Jaden Daniels. I'd be surprised if it was either of those guys. The betting favorite is Caleb Williams for a reason. But the combine hasn't happened yet. Teams are not done with their evaluations, by the way. Some, some regional scouts are, but the teams themselves are not done. Williams' numbers did take a step back this year, which, by the way... Do we raise red flags on that for Caleb Williams? Or, we, are we, are we, or, or for Cliff Kingsbury, or are we just going to ignore it? Just throw that out there. Um, but the, the playmaking ability that, that, that he offers out of structure is, is incredibly dynamic. You just got to live with the fact that he'll take some sacks. In some ways, Williams is a better prospect version, again, some prospect there, of Justin Fields. Holds the ball a little bit long. Big-time playmaker. I think he does some other you know, in-structure stuff better at times as well. But it is a good debate to have, and one the Bears are having, and they'll have to make a decision, Fields or pick QB at number one in the, within a month, basically. So who should be the Bears quarterback? CW for Caleb Williams, DM for Drake May, JF for Justin Fields, more on him in a second, or JD for Jaden Daniels. It's the pinned comment on today's video, so if the ad comes on YouTube, Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Sticking with the Bears and Fields then. Fields will draw interest if the Bears go quarterback at number one overall. Now, there are multiple rumors, reports, etc., that a second round pick or similar value, a future two that could become a one or, you know, players and picks, whatever, would be roughly the return. Maybe it gets a little bit higher, but I'm not sure it seems like the Falcons are going to trade you the number one overall pick, you know? In the end, the quarterback demand outweighs the available supply. I think the hypothetical trade package you could get for the number one overall pick versus Fields is worth considering on both sides. Hey, you can get so many more assets if you kept Fields and traded the pick. Teams aren't going to trade that, that, all that for the quarterback in Fields. Maybe that tells you a little bit about how he should be valued and what you should do as a team. So here's what Schefter said specifically on Fields. Again, the feeling around the league seems to be they'll wind up trading Justin. Whether or not they do, we'll see, but that seems to be the feeling. So where will Justin Fields play in 2024? The Bears are still a viable answer to this question. Get those predictions in for me in the comment section right now. Now, there are some 2024 team odds for Fields. The Falcons and Broncos leading the way, plus 350, plus 400. Bears still on that list. Uh, the, sometimes odds get weird. Like, why are the Jets at plus 700? That doesn't make any sense to me. Seattle at plus 950. Allegedly, Arthur Smith did not want Justin Fields in Atlanta. I think that might dock the Steelers at plus 1,200. The Patriots could hypothetically do the, the, the Bears thing of Fields and Marvin Harrison, right? In theory. The Giants plus 1,800. Minnesota and the Commanders are lower because tough to see the Bears trading Fields in division. 
just because you know how teams actually operate. And the Commanders, they have the number two overall pick. They should just probably go quarterback themselves. Fields' mobility at times was completely forgotten about by the Bears. Two years in a row, first half, they went, oh yeah, we forgot that he could run the ball. Really dynamic runner. They aren't figuring out why a quarterback's time to throw is long is noteworthy. Is it because he's not seeing it well? Is it not developing properly? Or is he trying to hold it to make big time plays happen? A little bit of everything there for Fields that makes him a still more of a flash based uh, investment at quarterback than a true clear cut top 10 guy. Even though there were some who tried to say he was the number two quarterback in the NFC entering this year, clearly. That is not the current case. But for several teams on that last list, he'd be an upgrade. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You're picking two to six player stat projections, more than or less than on said stat projections. And the goal is to get them all right. You do that, boom, you come out on top. Or what I like to do is the flex play. Instead of getting all three right, I can get two out of three right, or three out of four right, four to five right, whatever. Just increases my chances of winning. Also does decrease the payout, but that's okay because I would have gotten like two power plays right all regular season long. I got like nine flex plays right. That more than makes up for it in the end. One of my Super Bowl prize picks uh, slates over is not involving the flex play. It's the power play with the freebie from prize picks. Patrick Mahomes more than passing yards. A half. That's it. That is a freebie. I'll stake more than Christian McCaffrey yards on the ground, 88.5 there, and more than Travis Kelsey's seven catches. The two best playmakers for the offenses, I think, will be featured parts of their attacks on offense. Again, folks, today's show will be possible by prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. Sticking with quarterbacks from the same draft class, Zach Wilson trade. Uh, the Jets are expected to trade Zach Wilson for the low, low price of whatever you offer us. The trade value is not going to be high. Uh, there's, there's just no way you're going to get anything more than a day three pick, if that, out of Zach Wilson. Because who thinks he's going to be a starter for you? Nobody. Wilson's numbers this year in his career, we can blame the supporting cast. That is certainly true. Outside of a few occasional flashes, we have not seen NFL starter, let alone NFL franchise quarterback play, out of Zach Wilson. Now, ESPN doing an in-depth article, uh, executives saying, yeah, sixth or seventh round pick, swap of middle round picks, whatever. One assistant coach told ESPN this on the trade value. I'd give a two-week stay at a best Western. I'm not a fan. Sometimes assistant coaches, I think, like to see, see their... their uh, Quotes get put into on the internet, I guess. I was going to say the papers, but that's not how it works anymore these days. That's not a very nice thing to say about Zach Wilson. But remember, you're trading for Zach Wilson. He's got a year left on his contract. So he's got a year left on his contract, and then he got to either let him leave, bring him back on a cheap deal. You're not going to commit to him as a franchise guy. The backup stuff's been inconsistent. It's just not, it's not a high-level investment type of player in Zach Wilson. The value is going to be low. If he started three more years on his deal, maybe it's different. Now he does not. So where will Zach Wilson play in 2024? I don't think it's, I don't think it's New York. Where does he end up? Sound off for me in the comments section right now. While you're down there, make sure you guys are subscribed as well. YouTube.com slash chat sports TV. Let's get to 356,000 subscribers. We're 500-ish away. Hit that sub button right now. Stuff I'm sure we'll hear more of as the offseason moves along. Stefan Diggs trade. Asked about his future at the Pro Bowl was mostly non-committal. Uh, uncertain, also a good word for it. Here's what Diggs told ESPN, Stephen Holder. I feel like I take it day by day. I always thought changes going on, a lot of things going on. I can't really put the carriage before the horse, you know what I'm saying? But I got a great offseason in front of me to put in a, a, a lot of work in and kind of build around what we got and what we're doing. I can't tell you what the future holds, but I'm still being me. 
I'm ready to go no matter which way it goes. That keeps the door open for it going away from Buffalo because it wouldn't be the first time Diggs kind of forced me out or had issues with his organization. There are problems, though, with a Bills trade, hypothetically. So will the Bills trade Stephon Diggs? Why for yes and for no? Go vote in the comments section. Now, Bleach Report did an in-depth five to the teams that could trade for Diggs article and laid out a bunch of hypothetical trade packages so you can get draft picks this year. Here was their argument on the, on the contract breakdown for Diggs. Keep in mind, the Bills can save 19 with a move Diggs in a post-June first trade per over the cap. The club could also acquire 2024 draft capital and take a wide receiver in the early rounds who will play for a fraction of Diggs' $27.9 million cap hit for this year. Here's the problem. You can't do both of those things, guys. That's not how this works. You can't do a post-June first trade in time for the draft in April. That's not, how, that's not how days work. Here's how the contract breaks down for the Bills. Diggs has a $27.85 million cap hit this year. The 2024 dead cap is $31.10 million. If they cut or trade him before June 1st, they have to pay the entire dead cap hit figure. That's a negative $3 million in savings. So you're losing money and not having the wide receiver. If you trade or cut him after June 1st, you save $19 million with a big chunk of that dead money cap coming in 2025 because you can space it out over two years. But if you post June 1st, Tim, you don't get 2024 draft picks because it has to come after June 1st. So no, that's not how this works. You have to pick one. And because you can't get both things, I would be surprised if the Bills moved on from Diggs, given that, yes, his numbers went down this year, but he's still a really good wide receiver. And I think a, a, an entire year in the Joe Brady offense would probably be a little more stabilizing for him. Also, who the hell was going to catch passes from Josh Allen? Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox, and Khalil Shakir. We've got three slot receivers or tight ends there. Gabe Davis is a free agent. You're going to let Diggs go and then... Draft a receiver in round one, you get Keon Coleman, or Xavier Worthy, whatever, and you throw money at Marquise Brown? I think I, I just got worse at receiver either way.